you guys remember when he overhauled this trailer, we put this little key fob on here. So even though my truck has security, so if you unplug it with the doors locked, the truck's horn will honk and the lights will flash. We also can turn the lights on and make them do cool stuff under the trailer. You see it out there doing its thing from our hotel room. So about six weeks ago, a family friend from back home in Mississippi messaged me with a picture of this truck and I couldn't believe it. I knew it was my grandfather's. He, I think, ordered it this way because the option package is super odd. It took this long to finally get the deal done. It's bought and paid for and it is sitting at my dad's house in Mississippi now. So uh, I took off last night. I've made a couple of stops, stopped in Russellville for some business. I've got to make a stop tonight in Memphis. And then the next day we will go grab this sucker. So I'm super stoked. This is going to be a project that I'm sure I'll have to keep. Maybe the square body will be for sale. We will be taking it to C10 Nationals in Texas which is like a week away for me now. Probably have that thing available. So if you know someone interested and they're in Texas, they're gonna be at the C10 Nationals in Texas at the Motor Speedway on the 10th and 11th. Look me up. Well, here it is. It has been a journey to get this thing taken care of. And I'll, of course, pull it out and we maybe look at it a little better. Man, this thing is just straight. Even the rocker panels are in excellent shape. These old tailgate vans, these things were always getting beat up and super expensive to replace. Call those casket handles. I think I put those on for him when he first got this truck or may have helped my uncles do it. Your four headlights, most of you guys know this body style came about in 88. So in 88 and 89, it had the four headlights, and then in 90, it changed to uh, one-piece headlights. Kind of like Fox Body Mustangs. You can always tell the early gens because they're four headlights, which to me makes these more valuable because the four headlight setup was only on the first two years, and I like the low dash in these interiors so much more than the newer ones that changed to kind of the higher hump dash. This was the last generation GM truck ever that had this low and away dash set up. Honestly, it's nicer than I thought it would be. Like the grill, the plastic chrome is not folded up and wrinkled on the surround or anything. I love the bumperettes. This thing is straight and looks fantastic. Excellent patina. Did see a crack in the windshield from top to bottom, which there's something else that we may time just right when we get that windshield replaced. I mean, what a nice freaking truck. I honestly cannot see one single dent on this whole side. By the way, this is a, these were tinted mirror tent from the factory let's take a look inside hey these door pins and bushings are good on the passenger side sle so yeah cloth split bench power windows and locks i don't know what this interior color would, was called probably saddle or something like that there's not a bit of rust on this truck that i can tell i mean like that's red dirt from being down here in the south, but it is not rust. Look at that. That's phenomenal. I love, love, love this stereo setup where it had the EQ or your cassette player, AM, FM on this side. This is how you knew you kind of had the top of the line for it to have this. And not all of them even had center vents here, but... It's pretty standard on mid and up trim levels. Also, I love 88 and 89 was the only ones that had that solid green disc. I think in 90, they changed to like putting little hash marks in that arc for the speedometer. So that's really, really cool. The headliner, 
actually it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, it's it's sagging down a little bit, but it's not like, well, yeah, there's a little bit there. These are available though. Let's see, where's the release on these guys? Oh, I think the plastic handle's missing. Yeah, that's as far forward as it goes. Probably nobody's gonna be too excited to sit back here, but it is nice to see what kind of condition this seat's in. And these flip up. I'll have to look at that later. I can't remember where the levers are. And then this is the jack storage spot here, which is kind of nice. It's all finished out, just like the rest of the interior. And for some of you who won't know, but these are ashtrays. They used to come in cars. Wow. Oh, let's check the glove box. Some of you wizards can look at this and tell me more than I know about this truck. Let's look under the hood. So this one does need the door pins and bushings. It was funny when these came out in 88, a lot of the old codgers didn't want one because it didn't have any more metal on the doors or metal on the dash like the square bodies did. This was a drastic change. And I remember one of the big complaints because I was working at a body shop at the time when this kind of became the norm truck, they hated the idea that these are glued to the body. That was the first time that was done. And they thought, oh no, you'll be driving down the road and the doors are just gonna fall off, which still to this day, that hadn't happened. But yeah, these are notorious to replace these bushings and these pins because that's where you'll get the slop in the door. Yeah, look at that. I mean, yeah, the seat's got a lot of compression, if you will, down in the foam, but it's not busted. I really like it. Also, I like that this first gen didn't have the headrest on here. So when you're wearing a cowboy hat, you know, you got a little freedom. All right. Yeah, let's pop this under. Oh, the mercury switch light works, which is super cool. You just don't see that in anything anymore. Of course, you don't have to work on things anymore like you used to. Yeah, the shroud is excellent. No cracks. A lot of times if these things have been replaced or worked on, they always over-tighten these and they would bust. This is good. Vacuum tank. Look at that gearbox. I don't see a bunch of grease like it's leaking or anything. A little bit of coolant leak on the water neck. Looks like they took off that factory air box. I saw it in the bed. And then if you look, comment down below if you know what's going on here with this lid being upside down. But if you know about that, you'd also know it does no good <laughs> on one of these style air cleaners. That's why you probably had to add an extra nut for a spacer because anyway. This is specialty engineering here. Um, Got a side post battery. I'm assuming they stripped out that part of the side post, so they rigged this up. And then probably a longer bolt to go in because these do have a pretty shallow amount of threads on them. But here's something cool that you don't find anymore on cars. Again, probably don't need it. These generation trucks, the OBSs, are the only ones that have this where it's like a little service light. And then you can unlock it and pull this out like on a reel. And then wind it back up. There's no clip or anything, but you can use it to sort of see what you're doing. Awesome little feature. Miss that about trucks. But everything's in great shape. It's all here. Um, this, There's nothing missing here. It's just they had these smog pump brackets. So I'm not sure if it's like California trucks were required to have those or exactly what back then. But, you know, there's no tubes or anything on the exhaust manifolds like the smog required engines had. Let's see. 5.7 so yeah 350 wow this thing is in excellent shape you guys will probably get tired of hearing me say that but it really is go find another 35 year old car that looks like this and has never been touched exterior interior engine except the cool air cleaner of course all the molding still on it like what Yep, there's that factory air box and the snorkel tube that goes to the fender. Looks like a distributor has been changed at one point. 
this is a little snake hose that goes a uh, slinky hose that goes on the top of that manifold to this air box so you can get uh i guess warmer air sooner i think is the idea there um so your engine runs good runs good in cold weather yeah back window unscathed those look like we had a little silicone work here probably just because the seals got so old they just quit working and let it rain inside there i remember putting these bed rails on this truck too god it's been a long time ago all right oh look yeah the cargo light feature which is super cool all right where's the keys The door detent spring is certainly missing and won't hold the door open. And I noticed, yeah, the column's going to need those bolts tightened up. That's that's a really common thing with GM um, for tilt columns. The bolts, literally, you can just take this apart. You've got to have a couple of special tools and tighten this up. stuff moved out of the way and we'll take it for a spin oh, okay yeah that door pins and bushings got to get changed immediately oh this is my daddy by the way yeah this is this is uh grease monkey senior grease monkey senior <laughs> the og monkey <laughs> Hey, look, the speedometer works. And I don't know if that oil pressure's right or not, but if it's so, I'm afraid it's gonna blow the intake clean off of it. <laughs> yes, sir, look at this thing. Oh, when does it work? That's what I'm talking about. Let me see if these work over here. Oh, yeah. He said you put free oil in the AC, it'll work. Yeah, I love when people say that. It's like, all it needs is this. I'm like, well, then why didn't you just do that? When I looked, I just looked at the compressor. That's when it's not leaking at the compressor. That means it's somewhere probably in the evaporator or somewhere else. Mm. But if you do this compressor leaks, that's, that's yeah. good. If it's not, it might be a, that may be a hole in yeah. Here's my favorite part about these OBSs. I can stretch out. Oh, brakes ain't like square body. I can stretch out in this thing. It's so comfortable. Uh, come on, baby. We, we're good, right? Oof. Shift kit. Look at this. Comfort. So much comfort. I can't even reach the floorboard over here. Woo! Hey man, this is great. You can tell this was a mechanics truck because the check engine light came on a second ago, but after driving another mile, it went off, so fixed itself. All right, pretty good test drive. The thing runs and drives. I wouldn't be scared to drive it around town, but I certainly wouldn't want to be driving this thing from Mississippi to Oklahoma. You know, for those of you who are still sticking around, again, this truck was bought new by my grandfather. He came back from World War II and uh, worked at this John Deere dealership in town, which is eventually it just shut down. And um, he went to his own barn and started fixing all the people's tractors 
um, locally in counties surrounding Winston County. It just made sense. He was the person fixing their tractors anyway. So I remember when he got this truck, you know, and um, I don't know, it was super special to me. I couldn't be more excited to to have this, the, the actual truck, not just one just like it, and go through it. Got lots of ideas on what to do. I'd love to hear your guys' ideas too. If you know much about these OBSs, um, I mean, I had one. I had an 89 GMC, actually a long bed, regular cab. Probably LT swap, change all the suspension. I'm not sure if someone makes a full chassis for it or not. Most people do regular cab, short beds but we'll see what happens. We're gonna to need to sell that square body first though to finance all these big plans. But for now, I'll probably do the radio because only one speaker works and I don't have any of my old cassettes. I appreciate you guys watching so much. Um, I'm looking forward to this new build series and uh, we'll see you guys at C10 Nationals in like a week. The steering's actually pretty tight like this, but it's not really tight like this.